Yeah? Not gonna be a problem. She seems to be in no hurry to go anywhere. Gary? You think Gary had something to do with this? We just want to ask him a few more questions, that's all. Gary's harmless. I mean, he's a pain in the ass, because he's always just hanging around needing attention, but he couldn't really hurt anybody, I don't think. He gets thrown out of some places because he's awkward, a, a, a little strange. Ugh, sometimes he smells, but it's... <clears throat> he's homeless. I wanted to help him, but I never really had the time, you know? I mean, I, I didn't bother him when I found him pretty much living in the alley behind the club. Marcel, were you aware that back in 1975, Floyd Collister was on a list of suspects in the Barber Street murders? Yes, Floyd used to get into a lot of trouble with the police. He was a hooker and he took drugs. But, like I said, that's not the real reason why the police thought he was a deviant. Anyway, that's all water under the bridge now, isn't that right? He cooperated fully, as I recall, answered all the questions. They let him go, and after that, I decided that Floyd should <clears throat> move on, and he did. If I told you that out of the four male prostitutes that were identified as possible suspects back then, you're the only one left alive, what would you say to that? Ma'am, you're wrong. They're all dead. I'm sorry, but I really have nothing more to say to you. Hey, what's going on? Classic cork, huh? Gary, for a homeless guy, you sure have expensive taste in booze. Hand over the bottle, Gary. Yeah, of course, here. Why, what's wrong? Why are you looking at me like that, huh? That's just where Gary was holding the bottle. Not exactly a four-star hotel. It's a love letter to Wally from Gary. It would have taken at least this much alcohol to kill Beganowski. What do you think? We'll need to process it. Could have been used to tie up our victim. Tell you what, 
I'll buy you dinner if that DNA doesn't come back a match to our victim. Told you. Too bad about dinner. Maybe next time.
Gary practically lives at the club, and he found Beganowski's body, but I have no idea why his prints would be on a case of booze nowhere near the crime scene. What do you need? Show me what you got. The problem here is, I don't see how these things are connected. Hey! What evidence do we have? Come on, let's get serious. I'm not gonna wake up a judge for that. What do you need? Do you have enough evidence? Gary's got access to the club, and that bottle of classic cork might as well be a smoking gun, right? You bet we're bringing him in. I'll have Ray join you in interrogation. I think this is right up his alley. Mr. Beaumont, we found your fingerprints on a case of whiskey in Marcel's club. What can I say? I, I saw the case on the floor. It was already open. I needed it. My hands, they were shaking so bad. I, I just needed that drink so badly. But Gary, that was the same whiskey used to poison Mr. Biganowski. What? I just needed a drink. I, I didn't use it to kill Wally. Makes us think you're keeping other things from us. No, it, it, it's not like I always sleep there. I try to stay at the shelter, but sometimes it's full. So I have to stay where I can... where I don't bother anybody. Open your mouth, please. Yes, of course. Ah. What? Of course not! I had no reason to be mad at Wally. That was so long ago. What? What does that have to do with anything? We just want to ask you a few questions. I'm not answering any questions until you can give me even one reason why you think I would want to kill Wally. I had no reason to be mad at Wally. We found your letter to Wally. You had some real feelings for him. Too bad. He just wasn't that into you, huh? 
Gosh, I know how that can hurt, right? It makes you wish you could sit him down and just talk. Maybe tie him down so he doesn't go anywhere while you're sharing all those real feelings. Maybe try to change his mind a little with a drink or two or three. Or hell, maybe the whole damn bottle, huh? Isn't that pretty much how it went down, Gary? No, it wasn't like that at all. I loved Miss A. I loved her so much. Let's all just calm down for a second. Why didn't you give Miss A the letter? I just wanted to write down my feelings. For once in my life, I wanted to be honest with myself. She knew how I felt about her. I told her. I said, I love you. And she looked at me, kind of puzzled, and said, it must be so nice to be able to say those words and mean them. And then she walked away from me. I wasn't even sure what she meant, but I had my answer. We would always just be friends, and I could live with that. That's a lovely story, Gary, but will a jury believe it? If you're innocent, you better start answering our questions. All of them. Okay. Okay, I'll tell you whatever you want. Four months later, Muskie's found dead in his car off Barber Street. Lon Muskie, is that his name? I never asked. Sure, I beat him up, but he deserved it. He would take my friends out on dates, and, and they would come back bruised, sometimes bleeding. I wanted to teach him how to treat a lady in a language he would understand, but I didn't try to kill him. He should have gone to jail, but that detective, she let him go. But what can you expect, huh? You guys look out for each other, and I can't blame you. What do you mean, we look out for each other? Do you mean we cops look out for each other? Muskie wasn't a cop. No, you guys, you know, black people. I'm sorry, I mean African Americans. Oh, now I've gone and put my foot in my mouth. I just... Well, that's what happened, okay? That black lady detective showed up and let him go. I don't remember exactly what she looked like. I remember that her badge surprised me. I'd never seen a black woman detective before. Wait a second, you're saying Detective Warries Briggs knew this guy and just let him go because she was black and he was black? Is that the load of bull you're trying to sell us about one of the most distinguished officers this department has ever known? Please, I'm only telling you what I remember. I'm not making anything up, I swear. Maybe it wasn't just a black thing. Come to think of it, the way they argued, maybe they knew each other. She did say she was giving him a ride home. I, I mean, I think. It was a really long time ago. Setting aside Mr. Beaumont's racial insensitivities, I think we need to take a better look at Detective Briggs' involvement in all of this. You want to know what I think? I think this guy's a lying sack. This is a photograph of Lon Muskie from the Barber Street Murders case file. Is this the man you assaulted? No, that's not the guy. I mean, I'm sure I'd remember him, and that's not him. That's strange. But take a look at this photograph, then. This is another Barber Street boozer victim. His name is Matthew Dawes. Is this the man? That's him. That's the guy that hurt my friends. Matthew Dawes. If what you say is true, why would Waris write a different name in her notes? Did I hear Ray right? Detective Briggs's personal case notes were wrong? She must have known the victim was named Matthew Dawes. I hate to say it, but I think we need to get to the bottom of her involvement in all this. I can't believe it. And I'm not just saying that because I think this Beaumont guy's lying to us. Even if he were telling us God's honest truth, retired Detective Warris Briggs is one of the most dedicated and well-respected officers to ever serve in Las Vegas law enforcement. Hey, I'm off the clock, but if you guys need a hand, count me in. The Barber Street Boozer is a part of Vegas history. If he's back, then I want to be there when we take him in. Thanks, Greg. We can use all the help we can get.
Hmm, that's peculiar. Lon Muskie's name was written down in a different type of ink stock. Yeah? No judge is going to permit you to compromise her rights without some very compelling evidence. The name of the victim was written in different ink. These notes were altered after the fact to remove all trace of Matthew Dawes' name. I can't believe she deliberately tried to mislead us, but the evidence speaks for itself. Okay, I'll go with you to serve the warrant. Why don't you take Nick along, too? Another pair of eyes won't hurt. What's going on here, Jim? We need to talk, Warries. You gotta tell me what's going on. You changed your case notes. You omitted the fact that you knew Matthew Dawes. Why did you do that, Warries? There's no way I can help you unless you tell me the whole truth. Jim, you've got a lot of nerve coming in here like this. Like I'm some sort of common criminal. I gave my life serving this city. I demand some damn respect. Hmm. It's a shrine. I've known some cops who could never let go of some cases, but not like this. The truth? Now that's funny. You go on, take a look around, take what you need, and then get the hell off my property. Whoa, is this the right RV? More Barber Street boozer paraphernalia, nothing we don't already have. I never would have pictured you in pink, Worries. Worries knew this Dawes guy all right. Looks like they were more than just acquaintances. All the convenience of a real one. The Barber Street area. Thank you. 